I have a new video for you guys because two worlds are colliding today. Nickelodeon's TV show iCarly and Britney Spears' late 2007 meltdown. Because today we're talking about the episode Dan Schneider wrote about Britney Spears. It's titled I Fix a Pop Star and this episode is really offensive. It's making fun of Britney's mental health and exploiting what she went through. So today we're going to walk through why this episode is so wrong and it should have never Never been made in the first place. So let's get into it. I'm really excited about today's video because so many of you guys reached out to me and you have asked me to cover this. And it's really interesting because when you think back to 2007, 2008, when Britney was going through her crisis and her mental health issues, all of the media outlets were eating it up and exploiting her, taking advantage of what she was going through. And that went very far, very deep, even deep enough to Nickelodeon, where they wrote a whole episode inspired by her breakdown and making fun of what she went through and who she is. I watched that episode right before I filmed this video and honestly it's got me a little bit mad because they were so rude about Britney and obviously it's not like the character isn't Britney Spears. They have another pop star who is playing Britney Spears. Her name is Ginger Fox and she is nothing like the real Britney but of course they were making fun of Britney in this episode. They tried so hard to make Britney look like an unfit mother and that's the part that really has me mad. But before we read a little like summary about this episode and we get into the details I do want to say if you haven't checked out my merch definitely go check it out I really appreciate the support and it's on Amazon so you can get it for Prime also um I got this bracelet recently in my PO box so thank you so much I can't even remember who sent it to me but thank you I'm wearing it for my free Britney video and now we can go ahead and talk about this episode because I am livid so here is a summary about the episode and pretty much it reads washed up former teen pop sensation Ginger Fox finds out that Freddie is responsible for directing and producing the music video for Wade Collins, who is a pop star in the show. And pretty much they ask iCarly's crew to help this woman, this washed up pop star, Ginger Fox, get her career back on track. Considering that she hasn't regained her marbles, they've got their work cut out for them. Regain her marbles, like what a weird term to use. I mean, the episode alone, it's titled, I Fix a Pop Star. It's just a weird concept and something that probably didn't have to be included in the show, but it makes sense at the time, I guess, because everyone was doing this to Britney Spears. They were just dogpiling on her and making her look bad in any way that they could. And like I said a few seconds ago, they really tried to make her look like an unfit mother in this episode. And I think that's the most um, infuriating part of it all. So let's break down this episode. It starts off really <laughs> chaotic in the beginning with um, Jeanette actually spanking a fish. And then Freddie is talking about Wade Collins music video that they just directed. So just to reiterate the backstory, pretty much the iCarly crew directed a music video for uh, Wade Collins, who is a made up pop star. And um, it's doing very well. It's getting a lot of numbers and people are noticing, especially Ginger Fox. Here is a screenshot of that music video that they directed for the pop star Wade Collins. And then they start talking a little bit more about Ginger Fox. Freddie said that her career was so good at some point, but then Sam said that it went into the toilet. This is their Britney Spears lookalike, and you will see her throughout the video. Sam actually brings up a video of Miss Ginger Fox, a very embarrassing video, where literally this pop star is in the dumpster. She thinks she's in her shower, uh, in her bathroom, um, bathing, but realistically she's at the dump washing her hair with blue cheese. And Sam said, quote, that chick is a disaster. So I don't want to just act like this is all about Britney Spears because throughout the episode, you guys will see that they are leaving little hints that show that it's directly about Britney. And them just kind of showing this breakdown clip is kind of like them playing an homage to her having like shaved her head and such, which is something I will never show on my channel. So then the episode goes to Ginger and she is actually in her dressing room 
home where she is asking this bunny to do tricks kind of like a dog, like to roll over and to sit and such. She's very, very disheveled. Her whole dressing room is an absolute mess. There's food everywhere. Um, I think I see a drink bottle in the corner. Um, I thought I saw prescriptions on the friggin' couch, but I don't know if that's just me reading too much into it. Well, this man walks into the room and he is actually Ginger's manager. And he is telling her that she needs to rehearse because she hasn't had a hit song in years. Ginger has no care at all. She's eating food with her hands. She's got food all over herself. And this guy is just trying to help her, I guess, get her career back. But it seems like she's not motivated at all. And she's fully aware of how gross she's acting. You'll see her manager throughout this episode, but if you guys peek at that little picture on the wall, when I saw that, I was like, oh my gosh, is that Britney Spears literally in that photo? So this episode is definitely about her. In that same scene, Ginger Fox, the Britney Spears, look, not even look like the, the one who's acting like Britney Spears, shares that she actually fired her director because he was just telling her to do stuff. They're definitely dumbing down this character, and when you talk about accuracy, they did not get it because even Britney Spears, she can't go and fire anyone. She's been trapped in a conservatorship, but I'm not too sure if this is like during the like the breakdown, right before the conservatorship, because they do note at one point that Ginger Fox is 26 years old. So this might be kind of like the peak of the breakdown, uh, you know, as Dan is writing it. Well, Ginger saw the video that iCarly's team made for Wade Collins, and she loved it. So she asked her manager to go locate these directors and get them to work. She has a big performance coming up for the PMAs, which is the Pop Music Awards, and it's going to be her big comeback. I think that this performance is supposed to be reflective of Britney Spears' Gimme More performance, and that's the time in Britney's life that they're trying to gauge here. Well, her manager does as told, and he goes to Carly's apartment to go ask them to help him work on Ginger Fox's performance. So I guess they agree, they kind of skip that part, and they go to set where they're going to meet Ginger Fox. And there's this weird scene where Carly is constantly tying Sam's shoe. Um, it's like the shoe's already tied, but she spent the entire time with her hands playing with the string, and I just felt like that's a weird order from Dan. Like, why does, uh, you know, Sam need to have her foot all up on Carly? But at this point in the episode, Sam is not excited about working with with Ginger Fox and she claims that she is some psycho who took the psycho train to Psycho Island which was obviously not very kind. The manager comes to collect Freddy, Sam, and Carly to go meet Ginger and he actually shows up with some blood on his face because he claims that Ginger Fox stabbed him with a fork. You'll notice throughout this episode that they try to make Ginger Fox seem very aggressive and that's something I've never seen from Britney Spears. Like she's not an aggressive person at all. I don't see her throwing things. Like maybe that's like a Mariah Carey moment. I don't even know. Don't, don't hold me accountable for that. But like I don't see her stabbing people with forks and such. So the iCarly crew makes it to stage and they ask where Ginger is and it turns out one of her dancers shares that Ginger was just going to the bathroom off the side of the stage without any bathroom there so just literally on the ground then Ginger walks in and she's on her phone the entire time she's not paying attention at all and she is so rude Again, I feel like this is the opposite of Britney Spears because, like, she, she does have her phone. But, like, is she on her phone all the time? I doubt it. I mean, I don't even think she controls her social media, really. I mean, we know that. We know who actually controls her social media. But this is not a clear or a great representation of Britney Spears. The character is really aggressive towards everyone. And when she starts dancing, she immediately starts sniffing her armpits. And everyone is just grossed out by her. She can't do a split. She cannot keep up with the dances. And it's just the opposite of Britney Spears. People can try to come for Britney singing all day if they want to. But you cannot come for her dancing. Because she is an amazing dancer. No one can doubt that. Like, none of the pop girlies can do it like she did it back in the day. So that part was <laughs> offensive to me as a Britney fan. But Ginger becomes frustrated with everyone and she actually throws a fork at Freddy. Literally throws a fork at him. She was trying to hit her manager but she hit Freddy in the shoulder and he had it lodged into his shoulder. Which is just so dramatic. At the same time she is coughing it up and hacking up in her performance. She's making really gross mucus noises and there's actually some conversation that goes along on the side where Freddy's like can you imagine that she was named hottest woman six years ago? 
which again makes me think of Britney Spears because she did get that award um, on a magazine. I think, was it from, oh, I can't even remember right now, but I'll put the screen shot up of the magazine cover, but she got that award in the past and it's like, oh, another reference towards Britney. This was actually the episode when Spencer was like dating Gibby's mom and when Gibby's face was put onto his mother's body. And it's just crazy to see that. Actually, is it Gibby and drag? I'm like, wait, that's actually Gibby and drag. But that was such a weird episode to see him, like, just to see that whole scene. Because I felt like, why is Spencer even talking to anyone's, why, I'm just thinking, why is Spencer talking to anyone's mom, especially Gibby's? And honestly, seeing Gibby like this was just not cute. Like, that's just not the vibe at all. Um, yeah, yeah, just not pretty. I don't know whose sick idea it was to have, uh, you know, Spencer all over his mom and to uh, replace the face or whatever, but uh, what a weird, weird episode. So after that scene, they're at rehearsal for her performance, and it turns out that Ginger shows up four hours late. She is still hacking up a ton, and she actually blows her nose, and she sticks it onto one of the background dancers and just leaves it there guys like when i when i say i was gagging i was gagging and you know britney spears is not that type of disrespectful type so i just feel like again they're trying to make her look really bad look really disheveled i mean the hat and everything i don't know what they're trying to do but obviously it's not good it just reminds me of all the magazines that were trying to make Britney look bad at that time because they were just benefiting off of it. And this whole episode is just benefiting off of the struggle that she went through. So during rehearsal, she obviously was not great. She barely moved, barely sang, and she just did not want to be there. Very different from Britney Spears, who's always doing the most in her rehearsals and always killing it with the dance routine. Then, unexpectedly, Ginger's ex-husband comes and drops off her child. At this point in Britney's life, she was divorced uh, with Kevin Federline, and this was about the same age as one of her children, so it makes me think that they're, they're just trying to make it look like Britney's child was dropped off to her while she was at rehearsal. And of course, 20 seconds after she sees the kid and she gives it some kisses, she asks someone to take it away and she's acting really annoyed like she doesn't want to be around her child like she doesn't like her child and I really do feel like one of the goals of this episode was just to make Brittany look like a really bad mother and they will do this over and over again so first off she just doesn't even want her child she sees her child and she's like take it away I don't even want it and then the episode cuts to the iCarly studio where the three are just watching Ginger Fox's old music video during their conversation, Carly asks the group, how could Ginger be so awesome seven years ago? Sam says that she was young then, and now she's 26 and old. Remember guys, when Britney was put in her conservatorship, she was 26 years old. So I kind of uh, interesting that they made her the same age. And then Freddie answers Carly's question about why Ginger Fox was so awesome seven years ago. Freddie says that back then it wasn't real. It was all just editing and audio vocal filters. At this point in the episode, they're trying to figure out how they can save the show. And Sam literally says, we have a talentless woman who can't sing, can't dance, and looks terrible. At this point, everyone is really stressed out because the show depends on them, and they don't know how they're going to save this PMA's performance. They're also taking care of Ginger Fox's baby here, which, again, trying to make her seem like she's an awful mother and that she doesn't take care of her own children. Towards the end of the episode, it is showtime, and it's time to see Ginger Fox perform at the PMA's. Sam was still insulting Ginger Fox and calling her talentless, while Carly was calling out the agent, telling him that he is slimy. He should have never put them in charge of this because he knows how hard it is to deal with Ginger Fox. And he actually told Carly that he knows he's a slimy guy. And that's why he's in the music business because they're all slimy. And that may have been the most factual part of this video because it's true. Those in the music industry are extremely slimy. So Ginger performs and she actually does pretty well. I mean, it's not an absolute flop. The lip syncing was pretty bad. The dancing was pretty bad. Um, they definitely tried to make it sound like she was performing a Britney Spears song, but <laughs> she could never. And of course, at the end, to make her look extra bad, they have her raise her arm with some hair, and uh, obviously she did not shave. It's obviously fake, and they just wanted to make her look really bad. 
I don't know if that was them trying to make Britney seem very unhygienic, but that was kind of a theme throughout the episode with the um, the food on the shirt and the, just the clothes very disheveled in the beginning. So it, it did not make Britney look good. Or Ginger Fox, however you want to name this character. At the end of this episode, they want to ensure that you guys know that Ginger Fox is a terrible mother. And they cut to a camera interview where Ginger just runs up, grabs the mic, and she's looking for her child. She said, I cannot find my baby Brian. And then her manager steps in and says, oh, well, his name is actually Billy. So not only can't this character locate her child, take care of her child, but does doesn't even know the name of her children. That is far the opposite of Britney Spears. I feel like um, Britney's like biggest accomplishment is just being a mother. She loves being a mother. She's been very vocal about that in the past. And to know that her children have been taken away from her in this conservatorship uh, just breaks my heart. And it's like pieces like this episode that just kind of like uh, reinforce that Britney needs to be locked up or something when it's just not true. The media painted this fake narrative, this false narrative to uh, sell stories about Britney Spears because they wanted to get clicks and views and such. And they got it. They won. They made so much money off of her condition. And even people like Dan Schneider profited off of that situation by making a whole episode about it. So it's weird to see these two worlds collide. And I don't really like it, but I want to hear what you guys think about this episode below. So comment what you guys think of Miss Ginger Fox. Does anyone think that this isn't about Britney at all? Because I was wondering if someone's going to say that. Like, are you sure this is about Britney? I mean, I think it is because there are just too many things that add up. I mean, the, the divorce, the 26, the mess. It's just like even the dumpster scene in the beginning. It's all just so degrading and I don't like it. So leave your thoughts below. But usually at the end of my videos, I open a P.O. Box package, and I have a package right here, actually, from um, Amazon, but it's from, let's see, oh, I don't, I don't think it has a name, so hopefully there's a name on the inside. It says Zarif International. Zarif? I don't know if I'm saying that right, but if you guys ever want to send me um, a P.O. Box item, my, oh, my address is listed below. Oh, no, it's one of those packagings. Like, sometimes the packagings will have, like, a lot of dust will come out of them because they're, like, extra padded or something. Let's see. Oh, wait. Oh, tear here to open. Okay. I don't know what this is going to be. Um, kind of nervous, to be honest. Ooh. Okay. Here we go. Using my... Ooh. Here comes... I swear, the puppies come out everywhere, and I'm going to be sneezing all night. So I'm going to just try to sliver out whatever this is. Ooh. The packaging is incredible. Okay. It looks like there's a note. Yay. So she lists her IG and I will follow you right after this. I'll write you a full message on IG. You can read this on the video. SL04N, 2020 was hard. Thank you for setting light on Brittany and Amanda. We want to keep them safe and free. Black Lives Matter from a sudden desire. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, let's go ahead and see what you sent me and I'll check you out on Instagram. Hopefully, I'm sorry that like sometimes my Instagram messages are just a mess. So if you do ever want to reach me, oh wow, the puff all over me. The puff is all over me. If you guys ever want to get in contact with me in a, in a more efficient way, I will list my email below on the screen. But let's go ahead, ouch. Go ahead and see what this box is. I, I haven't read any of the other paperwork yet, so I really have no idea. Someone's calling me. Okay, ignore, ignore. I don't know if you guys could hear the FaceTime tune. It like came through my computer. Okay, come on now. This is a this unboxing is a little hard today. Ooh, what is this? Oh, nice. So it looks like they're gourmet teacups. Oh my gosh. Let's see what they're what they're talking about. I'm so excited. So this right here. Ooh. Yes. Look at this. Ooh, I love how it has like it has like another layer in between it. I don't know if you guys can see that, but these are so pretty. Wow. It's almost like an espresso shot in a way. Let's see what the other side is like. So I think this is a matching set of two. It is. Wow. Thank you so much much a sudden desire is that your page again a sudden desire wow look how bougie these are hold up let me drop the trash look how bougie these are oh my gosh i still have trash in my hand look at me <laughs> i'm a wreck but wow these are so nice and i love how they have like a little cup within the cup i don't know how to describe that but thank you so much for these i will definitely thank you on instagram and i really appreciate it i will see you guys in a new video soon bye guys